Hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. Well, it's around that time right here on KAZ Radio with one of my favorite ministries, none other than Fully Alive, with Pastor Abe Jeter. Take it away, Pastor. Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Welcome to Fully Alive. My name is Pastor Abe Jeter. Uh, today we're in chapter 3 of, of Genesis. Amen. It's a lot of controversy over the uh, first 10 chapters, 10, 11 chapters of Genesis. Uh, amen. But you know, I, I believe the word of God. I believe Genesis. I am taking things literally as we go into the word of God. Uh, you know, all your major doctrines uh, based really in Genesis. And so if you get the foundation wrong, uh, then the whole superstructure will be wrong also. Okay. But anyway, we're in chapter 3. It has to do with the fall, okay? I don't know how much, how far we'll get today, but ultimately, we're going to be talking about how did Adam's sin impact Adam and how does it impact you? But we're just going to walk down chapter 3, amen? All right now, we do appreciate your prayers, amen? All right. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask your blessings on what we're about to do and say. And we ask your blessing on those who are viewing the program today. It's in Jesus' name. We do bind the powers of darkness off the minds and wills of everyone under the sound of my voice. And we will give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' strong name we pray. People of God said amen. Verse 1. I'm just going to talk about it as we uh, walk our way down. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, we said last week that God didn't give the command to Eve directly. He gave it to Adam. And I, I'm assuming that Adam made it a little stronger. He says, if you touch it, you will die. God said, if you eat it, you will die. But what I want you to know is that Satan, from the very beginning, has been selling us the big lie. What is the big lie? That God cannot be trusted. So you'll notice his approach. Has God said, you know, notice his approach. Is God holding something back from you? Uh, notice his approach. Is there some good thing God's holding back from you? Now, is there something that it ought to be your right and privilege that God is holding back from you, you know, uh, is God selfish? Is God dependable? So Satan been calling God a liar from the beginning. Hath God said? You know, he goes on and, and when he responds, he's going to say, oh, no, you, you won't surely die. Well, God's lying. And that is a big lie that he's been impressing on the hearts and minds of people from the beginning. Now, you notice in Hebrews chapter 3, uh, and not only there, but they're quoting from the Old Testament, uh, how that Israel could not enter into the promised land because of unbelief. Uh, because the enemy was effective in getting them to not to believe God, not to trust God. He was Selling that big lie. And if you go back, you, 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 you remember when uh, God was leading Israel uh, through uh, uh, the wilderness and so forth. Um, there was this Balak. He hired Balaam to curse Israel. And, 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 and one scripture says, God is not a man that he should lie. 
not a son of man that he should uh, repent. Listen, 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 listen. Why is it that the God of heaven, the creator of the world, the holy God, why, why, why would he have to say that he's not a man that he should lie? Why should he have to say that at all? Because Satan from the beginning has been pushing that false narrative that God's a liar. You can't trust him. Amazing. Amazing. Be careful. Don't let the enemy deceive you because he's working overtime on your mind right now. There may be some area in your life that you need to trust God. You have a clear revelation from God. You have a clear word. The devil's right there saying, have God said, is God holding something back from you? Can God be trusted? God's a liar. And the devil is a liar, the Bible declares, and he is a father of lying. And I bind that spirit of lying right now in the name of Jesus. And I bind off your mind in the struggle that you're in. The spirit of God is ministering directly to you wherever you are. And I bind that spirit of lying off you right now. And I release faith. You need to confess what the word says. Speak it out. You need to believe it. Read it. Sing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Write it out and declare that you are who God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. And it's true. The word of God cannot be broken. Jesus said, he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never fail. And I don't care how many seemingly failures the enemy can point out. I don't care how many people you know, uh, who are saying uh, that the word of God is not dependable because of their own unbelief. You go back to the word. You stand on the word because the Bible says, these words shall judge you in the last days. Okay? Well, praise our God. Anyway, so the devil made that approach. You know? Excuse me. That subtle approach. Anyway, verse 2, the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat up the fruit of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. The serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then, you sh then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. <laughs> no, God's a liar is what he said. He's holding back on you. He knows that if you eat, you, you're going to benefit. You're going to be improved, you know. Uh, yeah, he don't want you to, to go to the next level. The devil is a liar, okay? Now, Eve's problem was that she engaged in conversation with the serpent. And that's your problem, too. You know what the Word of God is saying. Why are you listening to the devil? There was a song that says, Are you listening to the old man's rubble? If you are, sooner or later, you're going to be in trouble or you're heading for trouble. And that's the truth. You cannot be listening to Satan, okay? You got to get into the Word. Feed the Word in your spirit. Go back to what the Word says. Don't entertain thoughts that are contrary to what God says. Don't be around people that are negative. No, you've got to feed the Word of God in your spirit. You got to be around people of like mind, Okay? Well, praise our God. So you need to understand as you talk to the enemy, he's going to sell the sizzle. And pretty soon as you talk to him, he'll move you from a place where you know full well what God is saying. He'll move you from a place where you were very much committed to what God wanted you to do. But he'll move you to a place where your natural desires will override your sound judgment and you'll go in sin if you talk to him, if you allow him to paint the picture and sell you on the benefits. Don't engage in conversation with the enemy. Now, the Bible tells us we're to bring into captivity every thought because the enemy will approach you 
from the mind. Someone says the real battle is in the mind. Someone said the mind is the arena of faith. So you need to cast down imagination. <laughs> Amen. And all that which exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And you are to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And how do you do that? By feeding the word of God in your heart and in your mind. David says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In Psalms 119, uh, around about 9, 10, 11, okay? Yes, the word. How do I do that? By yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Spirit of God to direct me into the word, allowing the Spirit of God to lead me. Amen? So as you grow in Christ, you learn to hear his voice. Amen? Uh, yeah, you need to learn that, all right? And you begin to learn when God is speaking and when the enemy is speaking. So, so you can't engage in that conversation because if you do, he's going to sell the sizzle. And when he sells the sizzle, <laughs> your natural desire is going to kick in. Now notice Eve here. So as she talked to the serpent, now, she never had this situation before. Now, I don't know how long they've been in the garden, you know. The Bible's not telling us how, how long from the time that Adam and Eve were created that this situation took place. I don't know. How many days? How many months? How many just? I do not know. Okay? Did it happen immediately? Probably. Maybe not. But I do know that she had not been in this situation before. She was content not eating up the tree, okay? Uh, but as she entered into this conversation, the Bible says in verse 6, it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, well, she never, she never looked at that tree in that light before. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. I like that, that, that tree. Looks good for food. Oh, see, she was listening to the old man's rumble, and now she's heading for trouble. Look, it wasn't sin yet, okay? Because sin is a process, okay? The Bible says every man is drawn away according to his own lust. Yeah, yeah, the enemy is selling the sizzle, okay? He, he, he presents something to you that appeals to you. He brings something in your focus that excites your natural desire. Well, it's still not sin yet, even though your natural desire is saying, wow, that looks real interesting, man. <laughs> it's a process. And so the scripture says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, man, this thing looked good. A tree to be desired to make one wise. Wow, I can be like a god. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And so, so, so I want you to see this process, okay? The Bible says every man is drawn away of his own lust, okay? And, <laughs> and so, uh, and, and when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. So, so the idea is that uh, he used Eve's natural desires, okay? These were God-given natural desires. Nothing wrong with our natural desires, okay? Amen. Uh, but a temptation is when you are encouraged to fulfill a God-given natural desire in an unlawful manner, okay? God has given us a natural desire for the opposite sex, natural desire for food, natural desire for learning, understanding, natural desire to get ahead, all these things work for us in this earthly environment. And we need these natural desires to function properly. But a temptation is when I'm encouraged to fulfill a God-given natural desire in an unlawful manner, contrary to the will of God. And God already made it clear what his will was. But as she talked to the enemy, all of a sudden, she saw it as a tree a food to be desired, uh, it looked good, uh, 
natural desire for food, natural desire for uh, understanding and, and getting ahead, well, pretty soon her natural desires gained so much strength and force that it overrode her sound moral judgment. She knew what God said. There was no question about that. At some point, she wanted to do what God said, but as she talked to the enemy, she learned some things about her natural desires, human nature, hum humanity that she didn't know. That natural desires can come to a place once they're fired up that they can override your sound judgment, and you give in to that desire. Mm, 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 mm. She ate, okay? And when she ate, that was sin. Because the Bible says when you eat, you shall surely die. And we'll be talking about some of those things because what kind of death did she die? What kind of death did Adam die? Okay, but nevertheless, okay, let's touch on another thought here in this particular scripture, uh, controversial thought here, because it says that she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And so the controversy around here was that was Adam standing there listening to the whole conversation? Because Eve was, de was deceived, okay? As she talked with the enemy, she was deceived. Was Adam standing there listening to the whole thing? Now, some people believe that was the case. I don't, you know. I believe that he was certainly in the garden with her, okay? Just like uh, I could be upstairs and my wife could be downstairs and, and she can do a lot of things. And I come downstairs and, and then I could get involved in it with her. But I wasn't with her when she started that process. But see, I, my opinion that Adam was in the garden, all right? Uh, but he wasn't there uh, doing that process. But some people feel that Adam was so weak and so flaky and that he sit there and listen to the whole thing. And But he wasn't deceived. He just made a decision and bit the bullet, so to speak. Somebody says the apple, but we, he doesn't tell us anything like that. But nevertheless, so, so, so I believe that Adam personally was in the garden. I don't believe he was standing there personally. Uh, it's not a test of fellowship, whatever you believe on that point. But one thing about it, the enemy uses the most effective tool to cause us to compromise, okay? So he knew that he couldn't approach Adam with that line. It wouldn't have worked. But he could approach Eve, and he did. But no sooner than he approached Eve, he then used Eve to approach Adam. And Adam did not put up a fight. He accepted that fruit. He decided that he was going to go along with his honey. I mean, the brother didn't fight at all. Now, I'll just be honest with you. I mean, I've been in some of those situations myself that I didn't put up a fight either. And I sit back and say, you know, man, I'm just like Adam. I did not even fight, Lord. I oh, mean, I did not even resist. I just bit the bullet. I said, okay, God, um, I'm going to have to trust you. <laughs> I, I'm going to repent. I'm going to come clean. But I'm going to be real careful because I cannot allow the enemy me to have that kind of effectiveness in my life. But the brother didn't fight at all. The brother just accepted and ate. <laughs> my goodness, amazing. How effective the enemy was able to use Eve on Adam. Well, praise our God. Anyway, the Bible says he did eat in verse 6. Verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open. And see, so I see them in their innocency, uh, not knowing good for evil. I see them at this point uh, uh, coming to the age of accountability. Now they know some stuff. I believe that little kids, when they're born, I believe they're pretty innocent. I believe that uh, not until they come to an age where they understand the will of God and become accountable, that things of God begin to make sense to them and they become responsible for their decisions. But nevertheless, so we see them uh, here. Verse uh, 7, their eyes were open. They knew they were naked. And that's interesting 
this thing of nakedness. Well, uh, you know, God, God got this thing with nakedness. What, what do you mean? Well, you know, uh, Noah's son, uh, um, Canaan, um, well, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, anyway, uh, Ham, uh, saw uh, the nakedness of Noah. Told his brothers about it, and they've got a sheet and went backwards, covering him up. All right? Um, we believe that it's, God's got definite thoughts about nudity. And so we see here that they realized that they were naked and they sowed some fig leaves. But ultimately, you're going to find that God's going to make the first animal sacrifice, shed in the blood, and he's going to make them coats. He wanted them covered up a lot more. But what was interesting, when God gives the rules to Moses about uh, offering sacrifice to him, okay, um, you know, he, he was very particular about some things. He wanted the priest to have bloomers on all the way down their knees. Bloomers? Yeah, all the way down to their knees. And the reason why he wanted the priest is for men to have bloomers on. He said so when they... When they're bending over to make the sacrifice, their nakedness is not showing. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, God. Is anything above the knees nakedness? Well, hey, I'm, I'm just saying. Look, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm just bringing this up. I, I, I wasn't prepared to really deal with that thought. But, hey, I'm just telling you, he's a holy God, and he's, you know, he's, he's got some concerns about some stuff, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? Well, praise our God. The preacher then gone from preaching to meddling, okay? Well, let me go back to it. Uh, okay. All right, chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Isn't that an awesome, awesome thought? Amen. And, and, and uh uh, and I'm sure this wasn't the first time the, the voice of God was walking through the garden in the cool of the day. Amen. It's exciting the kind of fellowship that these uh, uh, folks had uh, before sin with the living God. Anyway, uh, now I want you to I want to show you what sin will do for you, okay? When you go into sin, uh, there's guilt, there's shame, okay? All right? And... and, and, and uh, and the enemy is moving like that in some of your lives right now. You know you've willfully disobeyed God. Uh, you're being overwhelmed with guilt and shame, uh, particularly those who profess to be Christians. Uh, raised in church, uh, you, you've given in, and the enemy is kicking you. He's beating you around, telling you you're not worth anything. Listen, you can confess that sin, the Bible says. First uh, John 1, 9, if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Yes, yeah, now... You, 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 you might need to ask God to help you, help me to repent, Lord, because you really need to repent of that thing from, from the heart, amen, coming to a place where, God, I don't want to go that way anymore. I want to lay this thing on the altar. And uh, But notice, notice, let's see, the scripture says that, and the voice of God, voice of the Lord God walking through the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Sin will cause you to hide. From God, because see, you know you're guilty, you know. Uh, but here, it, 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 so they hid themselves, okay, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and said to him, "Where art thou?" Well, he knew exactly where Adam was. God knows the begin in from the beginning. Listen, and, and and he said, "I heard that voice in the garden, and I was afraid." See, fear, uh, sin causes fear. Okay, opens the door. For a spirit of fear uh, to come on you. And so, and some of you are struggling with a spirit of fear. Amen. I mean, a real spirit of fear. Amen. I bind that fear off you in the name of Jesus right now. Okay? Because sin will cause you to fear. Okay? And so he says, I was afraid, so I, I hid myself. Um, because I was naked, I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Amen. And the man said, it knows uh, the next thing that sin will do. Sin will cause you to be uh, 
dishonest. What do you mean dishonest? Uh, it's somebody else's problem. It's not your fault. Uh, 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 yeah, and you will call it everything else except sin, you know? Uh, I was naked, so I hid myself. Uh, I heard your voice, and I was afraid. Um, you, it, 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 this is a woman's fault. No, no, man. Be honest. God, I have sinned. God, forgive me. Uh, or, or, or at least, God, help me to be honest. God, help me uh, to own up to this thing, boy. Okay? Because <laughs> you, you're not going to get help unless you own up to the thing. Okay? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you might be a preacher and you've sinned. You're going to get up there and try to preach. No, you got to be honest. You've got to repent. Okay? Uh, you might be a, 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 a singer and you're going to get up there and try to sing and you hadn't really repented of that sin and asked God to forgive you. Okay? You had to deal with that thing. You got to be honest about sin. Okay? Listen, um, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that you should not eat? And the man said, the woman thou us to be with me. Hey, she gave me the tree, the fruit I did eat. It's the woman's problem, okay? The woman. And God said to the woman, what is that thou hast done? Woman said, the serpent beguiled me. Now, she was telling the truth. You know? The serpent beguiled me, okay? The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat, Okay? Amen. Praise our God. And the Lord God said unto the servant, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and the dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Now he's bringing judgment on the uh, serpent, uh, but He's going to extend that judgment all the way to Satan because he knows who's behind it. Verse 15, and I will put enemy between thy seed and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise its heel. And that's the first messianic prophecy in the Bible. Now, we're going to pick up from here uh, next week. Amen. Praise our God. But ultimately, we want to talk about how did Adam's sin impact Adam? And how does it impact us? But we're going to pick up on Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 15. Okay, next week. Amen. Listen, if this message helped you, please let me know. Go through my uh, messenger on Facebook and let me know. Okay, Lord bless you. Lord smile upon you. Shed his countenance upon you. The Lord give you peace. Amen.